raise your right hand. Do you swear to tell the truth, so the whole truth? Do you swear to tell the truth, the whole truth, and nothing but the truth, so help you God? I do. Thank you. Mr. Hogan. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Good morning, Dr. Simmer. Good morning. Briefly tell us about yourself and why you wish to serve in this capacity. Well, first, let me say thank you to all of you for being here this morning, either online or in person. It's an honor, and, a, and I feel very humbled to be here in front of you today to uh, discuss uh, DHAC and, and my potential qualifications as the, to be the director of DHAC. I'd very much like to thank the members of the DHAC board uh, and certainly Governor McMaster for the confidence they've shown in me to nominate me for this position. Uh, again, I feel very humbled and honored to be here. Uh, briefly about me. Uh, I was born and raised in, Cle in the Cleveland, Ohio area. Went to uh, medical school in St. Louis on a Navy scholarship. Uh, I owed the Navy four years in return for that. Uh, got to the Navy, enjoyed my service so much that I just retired in December after 30 and a half years of service. Uh, in the Navy, uh, I had the opportunity to uh, serve in a number of roles. Uh, I was trained as a psychiatrist and still do see some patients as a, as a psychiatrist. Um, in addition, uh, I was the director for quality at the Navy's largest medical center uh, in Portsmouth, Virginia, and then moved on to be the uh, director for psychological health at the Navy's psychological, sorry, the Department of Defense's uh, Office of Psychological Health and Traumatic Brain Injury, where I was responsible for developing mental health policy across the military. From there, I was the executive officer at Naval Hospital Beaufort in South Carolina, right down the road. Uh, and that's where my wife and I fell in love with South Carolina um, and decided this is where we wanted to settle when my Navy career came to an end. Um, from there, I went to become the commanding officer at Naval Hospital Oak Harbor, Washington. Uh, if you're not familiar, that's on an island about two hours north of Seattle, uh, a very rural area. Uh, I was very active in the healthcare community there, working with the civilian hospitals, uh, CEOs and leadership. Uh, and learned a great deal there about the challenges of providing health care in a very rural environment, uh, something obviously we face here in South Carolina as well. Um, from there, I spent my last six years in the Navy as the Deputy Director and Chief Medical Officer of the TRICARE Health Plan. That's the uh, military civilian insurance benefit for the roughly 10 million active duty members, their families, and retirees and their families. Uh, and we provide care when a military treatment facility cannot. Uh, in that role, I was very involved in public health efforts. Uh, I was responsible for determining what the be covered benefits should be, what was effective, um, and how we should get the best access to care for our 10 million people that relied on us worldwide. Uh, over the past year in particular, I've been very involved in the military's response to the COVID uh, crisis, both in terms of improving access, working in in to ex increase access to telehealth, uh, and making that more available to our beneficiaries so they didn't have to go out to get care whenever possible, uh, and also ensuring that we had great access to both some of the emerging treatments for COVID, like the monoclonal antibodies you may have read about, and also not long before I left, focusing very much on, on the vaccine distribution and making sure that our military beneficiaries had access to vaccines uh, you know, in, in the appropriate sequencing. Um, I was also very involved with developing the next set of TRICARE contracts, uh, which will cover basically the military health benefit and shape the benefit for the next eight to 10 years. Uh, so to, to answer the specific question, why do I want this position? Um, as I said, South Carolina is our adopted home. Uh, we very much like South Carolina. Uh, I've devo you know, devoted my entire career to uh, serving those who are entrusted to me and whose care is entrusted to me, uh, trying to make sure that their health and quality of life is the best it possibly can be and improving that. Um, so I see this position as a natural next step in that process. Um, I, I very much uh, am looking forward to the opportunity, if confirmed, to work to improve the health and quality of life of all South Carolinians, uh, the more than 5 million people that uh, all of you represent, and uh, you know, also leading the more than 4,000 members of the DHAC team. Uh, I've, I've talked to a number of members of the team already, gotten briefings from them. I've been very, very impressed by the quality of people at DHAC and uh, very much look forward to working with them and leading them as they not only help South Carolina overcome the pandemic, but then the other challenges both on the environmental and health sides that we know will come, again, to ensure every South Carolinian has the opportunity to have the best possible health and quality of life. 